Cosette, thanks for talking with me this morning. You have volunteered with the Urban League. You have been a business consultant. You have been an educator. How do you plan to use those experiences plus your skill set to enhance our local chapter? Um, thank you for that question. Um, well, the um, myriad of experiences that I've had lend itself to helping to advance um, the promising transformation in this region. Um, I believe the marriage of education and workforce development um, to be closely aligned with the mission and objectives of the Urban League and also with what's going on in this region with the transformation and the paradigm shifts as it relates to economic growth and, and ways in which the Urban League um, can play a role mm -hmm. and ways in which the community can benefit and what the fair share of the Urban League can be in that process. Um, I've been part for a number of years of advocating for education and workforce development for underserved and marginalized um, individuals, which closely aligns with um, that and which is the mission and objective of the Urban League of Fort Wayne. How do you plan to actually generate funds to help out the programs the Urban League has for housing and education, jobs, things of that nature? Well, I'll look, um, with this being the first day on the job, mm -hmm. I will look at uh, what we've been currently doing, um, what we've been good at, and make an assessment from that in terms of looking at grants and other uh, traditional and non-traditional sources um, that we have sought and also working very closely with the board mm -hmm. um, to identify um, where there's opportunity and where there have been gaps in order to um, plan forward. Also it would be important in this process to look at our programs and, if it's, and its effectiveness mm -hmm. and how effective we've been in order to find ways in which we can attract funding opportunities. Mm -hmm. So um, that is a, a, a plan of progress mm -hmm. and um, so. I did some checking. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that according to Pittsburgh newspapers, almost four years ago, you resigned from Pittsburgh's education and workforce development position for the city because you were in, found in violation of residency requirements. Tell us a little bit about that and what you have done since then to pave the way for you to become the CEO of the Urban League. Well, first of all, that was that was not true. Okay. Um, there were other issues. Um, I resigned um, because I had been a victim of um, physical assault on the job, okay. and um, so that became the detractor. Okay. Um, and so the state of Pennsylvania uh, founded that I was not in violation, mm -hmm. and that that was a fabrication and a way of um, of. Um, Um, a um, retaliation, okay. excuse me. Okay. Um, and so, so that was not true. Mm -hmm. And what I've done is having the entrepreneurial experience, I was able to um, shift back into that okay. and use that to work on various projects um, nationally which included going to Shanghai, China to do e education and workforce development work as a consultant mm -hmm. and as a um, visiting professor. Gotcha. Nice. Thank you. Um, so are there any particular programs you would like to implement right away that you don't see currently established? Absolutely. I've looked at a few things. One is um, looking at ways to enhance business development in the region that is more comprehensive of business professionals. So looking for ways in which to grow entrepreneurial opportunities so that entrepreneurs are, are employers mm -hmm. for the community to help drive econ economics. Um, I also, to that same end, I will be looking to uh, grow and build and develop um, our young professionals in the region. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I was able to do in Pittsburgh was establish the Urban League and Professionals of Pittsburgh. That was a responsibility that I had. I will be looking to uh, staff the Urban League with that capacity as well in order to um, grow the talent of our young professionals and to help plug them into opportunities and to for pipeline development so that they're connected to our more tenured residents of the community mm -hmm. and to keep that momentum going for professional advancement of, of more young professionals as well. 
Um, third is looking at African American leadership development in general. Mm -hmm. Growing the leadership opportunities through board advancement, nonprofit and for profit board advancements, which would include more partnerships mm -hmm. with our corporations and with our universities, with our organizations, and with our government entities to uh, provide capacity and opportunity for our, uh, for our African American community to be more plugged into leadership posts. Also, within our corporations and nonprofits, we would be an advocate for pushing for the advancement of professionals in current from mid level to more senior level and those that are entry level to mid level. So, it, so it's about expanding our thought process and our methodology of how we look at African Americans in this community more comprehensively. Also, um, this helps to be a motivator for our more underserved in the community mm -hmm. as well as a momentum to create opportunities and growth. So it's a very much a, um, a very comprehensive reform within um, business and workforce development okay, and professional question. development. How do you yes. see Fort Wayne? I mean, was I know Fort Wayne has been undergoing this like economic renaissance as of late. Was that a factor in you coming here? Well, you know, what's interesting is that Fort Wayne is not unlike any other urban city in terms of the challenges, the economic, educational challenges, workforce challenges, health care uh, challenges. But what was, uh, so, but during the process of um, interviewing for this opportunity, I've come to learn more about the fast-breaking issues that are being addressed in the, by other corporations, by policymakers, which made it even more attractive. Um, and I saw it as a win-win opportunity to bring the myriad of experiences uh, that I've done mm -hmm. um, that would lend itself to having the Urban Glee play more of an integral role in the conversations, partnerships, establishing and forging s partnerships and being a catalyst for uh, generating ideas uh, in collaboration with what's already going on in preparation for building a workforce and um, enhancing education. There's a paradigm shift that's happening um, on a global level. And it's, it was wonderful to see that Fort Wayne, um, unlike some other places, have um, recognizes this and is, and is putting a lot of focused attention on it. What becomes key is the role that the Urban League can play in making certain that all citizens, African American citizens, are being included in that process and having a fair share in economic advancement, professional advancement, job training, um, educational preparation so that they can be globally competitive in the workforce. Perhaps Fort Wayne, given that this um, positive momentum is happening, positively Fort Wayne, mm -hmm. um, that this can position Fort Wayne in general to be a incubator for and a model for what can happen across this country and perhaps globally. So why that's why Fort Wayne.